we're going to yeah. start inshallah assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, assalamu alaikum wabarakatuh so inshallah we're going to do a quick um, basically a quick summary of some of the points that bob the builder raised today in this debate with jake so i think may, uh, uh, jake's purpose uh, for this discussion with bob was to shed some light with regards to the points he made in a debate with, uh, um, in the, in the debate with me that is bob when he had a debate with me he raised certain points with regards to the distinction between energies and attributes and that was his main objective to deal with that point so all these other points that bob the builder brought up were irrelevant and i don't think jake even bothered answering them because they've been done to that at the park and other places but just to clarify for those people who might not have come across it uh, let me first uh, ask sheikh muhammad sheikh muhammad as muslims we believe that allah has many attributes he has revealed to us 99 of them and we don't we don't uh, limit it to 99 is that right we this is what he has revealed to us okay. so let's deal with the attributes first alhamdulillah muslims define it alhamdulillah wa salatu wassalamu ala rasulullah actually those are the names of allah yeah. not the attributes we need to distinguish between names and attributes the 99 names of allah. the 99 names of allah is okay. something that which, which we are aware of yes. allah doesn't have only 99 names allah azawajal we are aware of 99 names in, uh, in this dunya and and we have a hadith that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned about the nine the, that he has names that we are not aware of or that's why the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said allahumma ni as'aluka bi kulli ismin wa allah ask you by every name that you have named yourself with anzaltahu fi kitabik that you have revealed it in your book aw 'allamtu ahadan min khalqik or you taught it to one of your creation aw istatharta bihi fi 'ilm al-ghayb 'indak or you kept it in the knowledge of the unseen with you so those that means that indicate in this hadith that there are some names of Allah Azza wa Jal that is, didn't reveal to us. Yes. So we are aware of 99 names of Allah Azza wa Jal. Related to attributes of Allah Azza wa they are more than these things. Mm -hmm. Now, the scholars of Islam, they have divided the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal into two main, two main categories. The first category, the negated attribute of Allah Azza wa Jal, things does it befit his majesty and glory, and affirmed attribute of Allah Azza wa Jal. And both of them, they are considered to be attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. For example, Allah negated for himself that to be oppressor. Yeah. Allah negated to himself that he's weak. He's Allah unjust. negated uh, unjust. Yeah. Or Allah negated for himself that to have a son. Mm -hmm. Allah negated for himself certain things. Yeah. That means that which doesn't it doesn't befit majesty his majesty and glory and it's against his nature against uh, against uh, it doesn't befit his majesty and glory as simple as that so that's why we say that is negated attribute of Allah which it doesn't befit his majesty and glory so we keep it like that now and related to the affirmed and things which Allah has affirmed for himself in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Quran the book of Allah or on the tongue of the Prophet what he has described Allah Azza wa Jal some of these affirmed attribute of Allah Azza wa Jal which is some, some, some of them are related to his essence some of them is related to his actions and anyone who studied uh, books of Aqeedah, especially for example Aqeedah al wasti and other for example books of Aqeedah and there is a, a beautiful explanation done by Shaykh Ibn Uthimi rahimahullah and he was, he was bringing these topics and he was pointing about these important things so uh, and mentioned that, that the, some of the attributes of the affirmed attributes some of them are, are related to his essence some of these attributes related to his actions and anything which is related to his action it is under his will so, for example, Allah Azza wa Jal, from his essence that Allah Azza wa Jal has hands that befits his majesty and glory, Allah Azza wa Jal has, uh, has face that befits his majesty and glory, etc. Whatever Allah described himself in the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet Things which is related to his action that Allah Azza wa Jal, for example, Allah from his essence that he is merciful in his essence, tabaraka wa ta'ala. So that's why he is merciful before creating the creation, he was merciful, and he, after creating the creation, he is still merciful, tabaraka wa ta'ala. Yeah. And, and Allah encompassed some of his creation with his mercy, yeah, and that's now here that comes to his action. So that's why we need to understand that the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal, mm -hmm. it is in his essence, tabaraka wa ta'ala, and as well, it is part of, as well, it is his actions when he encompassed uh, his creation with his mercy, tabaraka wa ta'ala, and as the many hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned that Allah Azza wa Jal has, uh, has hundred mercy, and that, meaning that this is in related to the, uh, to the, uh, to his creation, meaning that he created created this, uh, this one and some of the scholars they said that this is about the number, the, the number here is not about that's only 100, it means that it is a lot that Sorry, you cannot so even comprehend so just to, with our just mind. Just to clarify, so Allah, Allah's attribute is his mercy, yeah? one of his attributes is his mercy. Merciful, yes. And then Allah created 100 parts 
uh, as mercy for his creation. Yes. Which is distinct from his own attribute, uh, isn't it? Yeah. Now here, that shows that the mercy of Allah that he has sent this mercy to in related to the, uh, because creation. we have in related to the creation. Yeah. We have two hadith. One of the hadith, inna lillahi tas'an wa tas'ina, or inna lillahi mi'atu rahma, that Allah belonged to Allah a hundred mercy. And there is another hadith, inna Allah khalaqa, Allah has created. Yeah. And one of them was sent down to the create to his creation right. so for example here we read the, the we read the, the two hadith here say muslim uh, there's 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 a sahih muslim the sahih bukhari ja'ala allah rahmata fi mi fi mi atij allah made the mercy in 100 parts fa amsak 99 jan he held with him 99 parts and one sent down to earth fa minha yatarahamu al khalq from this that all the creation that they get they have mercy towards each other. Yes. Yeah. That to the extent that the, the female horse will lift up its uh, its leg so not to hurt its its, uh, its 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 fellow or the baby. Yes. Yeah. So that's one this is the hadith of the Prophet. As well, we have a hadith as we'll mention in Bukhari, as well it says, in Allah Allah has created the mercy, hundred mercy. That he held with him ninety nine. And in another, another in Sahih Muslim, in Allah to Allah belonged to Allah the hundred mercy. All of these things it is related to that that Allah encompasses that this is under the will of Allah Azza yeah. So what does it mean? Allah kept ninety nine for him. What does it mean? It means that uh, here the scholars they have they, they talked about it. We have for example just reading here mm -hmm. what for example uh, Ibn, Ibn Hajar rahimahullah what he said. He said he said the hadith of Salman that he said that Allah in the in the day of judgment that will that will keep this this mercy and will encompass only his believers in the day of judgment with this. Okay. So it is related to the will of Allah Azza wa Jalla. That's this mercy. And Qurtubi he said Muqtada هذا الحديث أن الله علم أنواع النعم التي ينعم بها على ينعم على خلق Allah Azza has given the favors that He has encompassed His creation with hundred with hundred parts, yeah. and He gives them in this dunya one of them. So this, this is, is, this is the name, the favors of Allah. This yeah. he, the, so yeah. Qurtubi says that these are the favors of Allah. Yeah. Karmani, for example, he mentioned Al Rahma he abar an qudra al mutalaq bi asarqe his ability to reach to make the goodness reach to His creation, mm -hmm. and the ability of Allah Azza wa Jal is is cannot be bounded, cannot be restricted, cannot be comprehended. Yeah. Okay. So due to this, we need to understand it within. The context. So that's why when we say that Allah Azza wa Jal, His mercy, it doesn't mean that He has He has a number of mercy and and some of His mercy went down and He kept only nine. So that's why the number is to show that Allah. This is in related to to which He encompasses His creation with. Exactly. Yeah, and it is and in related to the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. Okay, salam. Uh, and, and the things which is related to the will of Allah, related to Allah Himself, Allah's mercy, that Allah Azzawajal cannot be comprehended. Absolutely. And His mercy so cannot shows, be comprehended. So that's. The, uh, what do you say? The, the amount of, like just a small percent, like 1% of the mercy which Allah created for the creation. With that, so when you see a mother loving her child, and that's, the part of, uh, the, that's the part of part of the mercy of Allah. Child, it's only one percent, less than one percent. Yes, this exactly. the holy creation. Yeah. No means from the, the hundred parts only one part. The holy creation they share one part. Exactly. The holy creation of Allah. This shows the magnitude. Since Allah has mercy. created the heavens and earth until the day of judgment, yes. the holy creation they are sharing this hundred, this this one, one part, part. Yeah. and this one part will go back to Allah Azza in the day of judgment. Will will encompass yes. His believers, the one who believes in Him in the day of judgment. Here again, this is related to the the the, the mercy that Allah has created for His for his creation. But in related to the mercy of Allah Azza, it cannot be bounded. It's something which is cannot be comprehended with our mind. Yeah? So that's why we need to we need to, to distinguish between these two things. That the mercy of Allah Azza has two has two sides. One side which is related to his essence, yeah. that Allah is merciful before he created the creation and after he created the creation, he's still merciful. Nothing changed, yeah. nothing changed, nothing being deducted from him. When he has encompassed his his creation with his mercy, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that some of his mercy was deducted yeah. or whatever he has given all of his creation all the favors that he has encompassed with his creation with nothing was deducted from his kingship yeah. and, 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 and ownership so that's what we need to distinguish between that and the mercy of Allah that it is related to his will which he has encompassed his, his creation with and he, he bestowed it upon his creation in this dunya one person and 99 percent lift with him when the day of judgment Allah will, yeah, give, it, will give it to the believers in him so, so do you see to see the difference. Yeah, no, absolutely. So another point to move on, uh, we made was uh, that, uh, sorry, Bob usually makes this like with regards to Allah being or God is not the creator until he creates something. 
Now this is this sounds absurd obviously to the Muslims because we know that Allah has his attributes eternally with him. Yes. It doesn't change over time. It doesn't change. And I think even among the Christians, for those Christians, I think majority of them, as Jake said, do not distinguish between the energies and the attributes. They all believe as well, just like uh, Saint Athanasius said that this God is a creator or a maker even before he made or created anything. And it would be foolish to say otherwise. So this is something that uh, as Muslims and even as Christians, we recognize that Allah has these abilities or these uh, attributes from eternity. It's not like when he created or all of a sudden he had this energy come into him and then he was able to create. Because he had the ability and the attribute to create, he was able to create. Isn't that right? Shaykh? Now, related to the creation of Allah, yeah. again, going back to the same point, we said to you that there are the affirmed attribute of Allah is divided into related to his essence and things which is related to his action. Yeah. The things which is related to his action, some of them are unconditional, some of them are conditional and related to his actions. Now, in the things which is related to his essence, Allah Azzawajal is Khaliq and Musawwar. Allah is is is, uh, is the creator, mm -hmm. and Allah Azzawajal is the one who make who make who create things perfectly yeah. before He creates the creation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is related to his essence. Now and as well. When, when it comes to the action of Allah, when He creates things, that is part of His action now, they become now part of His action. Exactly the same thing with His mercy, mm -hmm. yeah? So Allah Azza wa when He, when he decided to create Adam, yeah? So that's, this is His action now became, uh, uh, this, this, this is part of His actions. So, but before He created Adam, He was a creator. So before He created the creation, so this sifa, this attribute of Allah, yeah, they call it sifat fi'liya. Yeah. So that's why, so that there is sifat dhatiya, yeah. sifat dhatiya, Allah Azza wa from His sifat dhatiya is, He is a creator before he created the creation and after he created the creation it's still his sifa that he that he is a creator and as will it become fi'liya when he because it's related to his will and that's why we need to distinguish between and similarly with the speech of Allah Azzawajal, that Allah Azzawajal is able to speak before before he spoke the Ta'ala before he spoke he said the he Quran the yeah he had the attribute before before he said the Quran that Allah Azzawajal he had that attribute in his essence the Ta'ala and when when he when Allah Azzawajal has said the Quran that's why the Quran has a beginning because that's what Allah has said it at a certain point. So that's why it, it has a big... It happened in time. It happened in that's time. Why the Quran. Just, that's why it becomes fi'liya. So, and related to his will. For example, we know that Allah Azzawajal will accept, for example, that Allah Azzawajal, for example, is a forgiver. Forgiver before he forgive. Yeah. But when you ask his forgiveness, yeah, when he grant you the forgiveness, then it becomes fi'liya now at this point. But he still, he is a forgiver before before he forgives. So I, think, as, I think the terminology that Bob the Builder usually uses is like, oh, this is transactional. So God is dependent on the creation in order to forgive him, in order to create him. This is utter nonsense. The reason for that is because just because a rich person gives charity to a poor person does not make him dependent on the poor person. Yes, even the there's a, there's a transaction, but it's not because he's dependent. There's no contingency here. It's yeah. it's something that he's is able to because of his compassion, because of his generosity. The man is able to give charity to the poor person, and this this is what we see. We don't see any sort of uh, what is a dependency here. So I think it's a wrong or, or false equivalence to say that God is dependent on His creation when He shows Him forgiveness. Yes, I, the I, creation is in need of forgiveness. Allah, whether <laughs> he's not in need of anything. If he wants to forgive, he forgives, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And within our yeah. with the, within our own analogy, within our own time, yeah. we see things. We see some mothers uh, have no mercy towards their children to the extent we recently we saw a mother that she threw her she killed her child, yeah. uh, killed her child or threw him in the bin. Yeah. So yeah. she has no mercy towards this yeah. child. Yeah. Now. Even though she, that she had the child, it doesn't. It, it didn't give the, the mercy to with her. Mm -hmm. So if if the mercy wasn't pre-existed in her heart before, yeah, to be merciful with her child, then in that case, how is she gonna grant the mercy towards the child? Yeah. So the point is what I'm making here. So even in related to our to us as a human being, as a creation of Allah, we still. We still, we, some of us, before having children, they have mercy towards the children, even before having mercy. Yeah, yeah before having Absolutely, children. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, even us with own our energy. And Allah has the best example. We're not using us to confirm that Allah, you know, has the, we're saying, we're saying this, even within us. And the one who doesn't have mercy, 
before having children, it will not, it will not be given, the mercy will not come just suddenly to him. It could happen, but generally, if someone was so, uh, for example, so uh, uh, immerciful, you could say, someone who's, uh, uh, who's so, you could say, so cruel, for example, someone against, against everything in the life, so this, this, this mercy, if, if, it's, it's, it is, if it's absent in his heart, yeah. it will not come, because, for example, the so Prophet ﷺ... Only if there's the attribute, he can manifest it, yeah. otherwise he can't. Yeah, well, he can't. Absolutely. The Prophet yeah. ﷺ, a man, he said to him, he saw, he saw the Prophet ﷺ kissing his, his grandson, Al Hassan, and then he said to him, I have 10 sons, I never kissed any of them. Yeah. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, what, what I do to you if Allah took the mercy out of your heart? Yeah. So the point is that if the mercy was taken from the heart before, so it will not exist later. That's my point. Isn't there so, a hadith which says that if you don't show mercy on, you, on earth, that Allah, will, Allah, 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 Allah will not give you the mercy. Man la yurham, la yurham. The one who doesn't give mercy, mercy will not, will not, get, will not yeah. have mercy. Will not so it's exactly the same thing. So unrelated to us, uh, this is, these things are related to us. How about Allah wa ta'ala? Yeah. So Allah, before he created the creation, he was merciful. Before he created the creation, he was a creator. And then we, after he created the creation, it doesn't mean that some of his some of his attributes being deducted from him he's still the almighty the all-powerful and nothing was deducted from his ownership and kingship so can you show an example of where allah was merciful because this is the contention that bob has yeah. where was allah allah merciful before he created the creation can you give an example of that allah Azul has described himself for example with the rahmah in the quran rahman rahim. rahim allah has described himself with the rahmah and that's why the, uh, when, when we have this, uh, Allah Azza has described him in many places in the Quran with the Rahma, al Rahman, uh, and, and Allah says in the Quran, Allah stated in the Quran here, there's one point here, Allah stated here, al Rahman ala al Yeah? Yes. Can you, can you? What's the meaning of this? Yeah? Allah says, al Rahman, yes. that he raised above his throne, yeah. and he is above his throne. So when Allah above his throne, yeah? He was, for example, Allah was the most high before he created the, Allah, before he created the throne. Allah didn't need the throne to raise above it. Allah was the most high before he created the throne. But he is above his throne the way that befits his majesty and glory. Wa ta and when Allah has mentioned this, Allah stated about him, he is a Rahman. When he is above his throne, this is, and that indicates as well, that okay. this verse could indicate, this is before anything Allah, occurred. before anything occurred. Yeah. yeah? So that's, that shows, that, that shows uh, that that's, that's one thing. And as well, he is still above his throne, yeah, the way that befits his majesty and glory. And that's, that's something which is we, we need to understand that when Allah Azza wa he is the most merciful before he created the creation. What about the Jannah? And, and after the... What about the Jannah and the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, sorry, the paradise and the earth? These were also created for humans, isn't it? Yes. And, and obviously the jinn who are pious. Yeah. So these were created before the jinns were created and the insan were created yes. before humans were created yes. and this is also from the mercy of Allah yes. so there is no transaction here because they didn't even exist and Allah yeah. created these Allah things created, these created things. the jannah, created the paradise, created the earth exactly. and the animals Yes. And, and I will and, add and to, all the things. And I will add to this yes. that Allah, the first thing the scholars of the debate, which is which is it was created first, was it the pin, was it the throne? So they have they have this debate. Yeah. So they said, and if the, the scholars who said, they said at the end of the day, the pin was created at a certain point that Allah has created the pin, yeah. and Allah commanded the pin to write everything that is happening and will to happen until the day of judgment. And this was before anything Before was anything was anything there, was before created. anything was created. Yeah. That includes his mercy, tabarak wa ta'ala, that he encompasses his creation with his mercy, include that he's got, gonna guide people to, uh, to, to his faith, yeah. including the prophets of Allah, the messengers of Allah, all of this, the believers, the disbelievers, all the way until the day of judgment. Now here, it doesn't mean that this is the knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal, yeah? This is the, that Allah knows these things will happen, and Allah Azza wa Jal will, uh, from that, even before he created the creation, he granted people, because he commanded the pen, to do what he wants, what he wills. So command the, command the pen that he's going to grant some of his creation with his mercy in the day of judgment. No this before, yeah? before, before he created the creation. Yes. So he, 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 Allah in that pen, this conversation which we are discussing here was written. Was written. Yeah. So Allah says, write everything until happen, until what happened, until, until the day of judgment. So that's the command to the pen. And that includes as well that he's going to encompass some of his creation with his mercy. To guide them to the path and as well uh, yeah. to grant them Jannah etc. This is before he created the creation. Absolutely. So that shows that his mercy, his mercy wa was granted before he created his creation wa and, just, and he had, and he just had so the people mercy. don't get confused this is the full knowledge of Allah it doesn't mean Allah is 
making uh, decisions on, on behalf of the people. Ultimately, it is the people who do good or who do bad. So <laughs> yeah. they have the free will, isn't it? Yeah, they, Allah stated in the Quran. Yeah, the free will is again under the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. But Allah again is stated in the Quran. We have showed him the guidance. He's either thankful or, or ungrateful to Allah Azza wa Jal. Yeah. So Allah give us the guidance. Now here's the choice. Now, but this choice, Allah Azza knew what you're going to choose. And due to this, you don't know what's going to happen in the future. But due to this, Allah has already prepared for you consequence for your decision that you took. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. This is from his knowledge, Tabaraka wa ta'ala. Yeah, so he has a knowledge of that. So, so for example, by free will, let's say you have two choices, choice A and choice B. So it is ultimately the person who makes the choice. Yes. Allah doesn't make it on his behalf. We, because uh, to, say ultimately, to say ultimately, we're reluctant to say this, but we okay. say if you choose the right, the right choice, because Allah enabled you and helped you and guided you to, yeah. to, to choose the right choice and sent all the prophets and messengers of Allah to you to, to, for you to choose the right choice, due to this, yeah, you have chosen this right choice and made sense to you, for example. But uh, that's yet Allah will reward you for that. Yeah? And that's why if you, if you choose the wrong choice, it's because of yourself and the shaitan. It doesn't mean that Allah, and Allah as well, as well enabled the evil to exist in his kingdom in order for you to have the choice if you if the if the evil doesn't exist what's the choices then but what i meant is like allah doesn't compel you it doesn't come yeah, doesn't force you yeah between a allah doesn't force you you're not yeah. majboor you're not you're not forced to do yes. to do haram and, and and as well but you're encouraged to do the good things yeah. so whatever so, the consequences good or bad is depends on your choice good or bad in your choice good or bad yeah. exactly so moving on uh, you want to make a point and, and, and the will and the will of allah of course and the will of allah yeah, yeah. and the will of allah so, can, can i ask yeah, come here, come here, so we can come in for the camera. So with regards to the attribute, yeah. it would precede... What are these, by the way? Uh, these are toys. Uh, I can show you later. <laughs> I thought, yeah, okay. But, um, yeah. So the, the attribute would necessarily have to precede the effect, in the sense that, like, if I'm going to be generous mm -hmm. i already have to be generous before i'm evil able before yeah. i'm even so able to, to give. the attribute of generosity yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah but and that has to be present in order for me then to start to will generous things yeah. like in for example the uh, giving charity and it's not the act of charity that makes me generous but it's that attribute already being present yeah. there that then allows yeah. you to express the effect yeah. exactly so it's, of it's, it's your attribute of we have we have hadith of the prophet sallallahu confirming this he said alayhi salatu he said that he said the people are related for example some people allah azza will give them wisdom some people allah azza will give them wealth so the people who allah give them wealth they will use it uh, they will utilize it in, uh, in in good deeds yeah. and some people are they give them the wealth what they will do they said i wish if allah give me such and such wealth like that person i will do such and such like him yeah. then allah says uh, the prophet he said and he will have the same reward for that he will have the same reward as someone who was generous so he, this person didn't have the wealth because he had the concept of generosity mm -hmm. and being kind to others mm -hmm. and and because of this allah reward him for that so do you, do you see the point? So that's why that's why even even within us as a creation of Allah, we have this. Some people didn't they didn't show any generosity because they don't have. But if they have the wealth or what's sufficient for them, then they will they will show the generosity in 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 in, uh, so in, he, in, in practice. So he gets practice. rewarded just for his intention. For the intention, for that. So oh, and he will be similar to that. Yeah. yeah. And 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 the same thing. Someone who Allah give him, for example, wealth, and he is using it in a bad way, and he will say, I wish I would like to, it will be like to do, to do it. In a bad way, so he'll, he will be as well will be blameworthy for these things because you should have always the good intention. Sorry, so, sorry, let me get that correct. So, imagine a person wants to do something bad, yeah, something. Let's say he wants to steal, so he makes the intention of stealing, but doesn't actually act upon it. If he doesn't act upon it, then what? Happens? And he didn't say about, he didn't talk about it, he yeah. didn't, he didn't act upon, it, he didn't talk about it. Then he is, no, he's, there is nothing happening. He's happened, not accountable. He's it. not accountable for it. Okay. But as long as he didn't associate himself with thieves. You understand? Yeah. So some people, they it, it, if I remember correctly, does he not get like one reward for not acting upon if it? If he doesn't act, if he prevents himself from not acting upon it, that's yeah. something. And if he is happy of what's going on, then he is blameworthy. For oh, example, yeah. there is the, the Prophet Sallallahu he said one hadith, he said, Allah will send the angel of punishment to destroy one land. And then the angel of punishment came to him. They said, we, there is such and such individual amongst them. Mm -hmm. He's a believer. Yeah. Then Allah will say to them, start with him. Start with him. <laughs> why? He said, oh Allah, why? He said, his face feature didn't change when he sees my name was remembered in a bad way. Yeah. That means he was happy about what's going on with them. And he's okay, but he, uh, yeah, he didn't act like them, 
But he was happy about these things. You understand? So one of the principles for a Muslim is yeah. Umar bil Mahu. Yeah, Maru, yeah that's why. The Muslim. minimum of the Iman yes. is to if either you change it with your hand, yeah. with your tongue, or with your heart. If you see something bad, you say, this is wrong. I don't, I don't accept it. Yeah. But if you accept it with your heart and you say, it's okay, it's, it's fine to do it, then you are blameworthy with it. So see, this is, this that's is, that's this is uh, something which is a lesson which we all should take, I mean, myself included, that when we see something evil going on or some something bad going on yeah. like uh, like uh, Sheikh Muhammad said there's three levels of Iman so you, you you try to stop it with your physically if you can't do that then at least speak out against it against the evil and if you can't even do that then at least in your heart <laughs> just hate it just yeah you in your heart you feel that that's something accept bad yeah just you don't that. accept it within, within your uh, within your heart even yeah. and that's the weakest of level of Iman. that's the weakest level of yes. Iman. yeah so inshallah i think this is uh, a message for us to give dawah where yeah. we can yes dawah to like i said amr bin ma'roof and ayan al-munkar so yes. we call towards what is good we invite towards the good and we forbid what is evil exactly yes, and try to do it in these three levels as as to the best of your abilities inshallah. yeah inshallah. yeah so another point that i yeah. wanted to raise is like uh, some of the christians like bob the builder say that we the quran talks about he says body parts yeah he uses this term as muslims we don't use that language as body parts of Allah. yes but we use the terminology we don't say body parts do we yeah. we say hand even though he says his body parts because he's thinking in terms of uh, physical physical anthropomorphism yeah and this is something that the muslims do not think in terms of that so how would you explain to a person who who is not well versed into this uh, terminology now we need to understand that uh, yani, uh, some of the muslims they went a bit away from the understanding of the quran yeah. and they try to interpret the attributes of allah Azul, his essence yeah. now here if you remember again going back to the division of what i mentioned to you earlier some of the some of the attributes of the fm attributes of allah some of them related to his essence now we are talking about the essence of allah Azul, the hand of allah Azul, for example the face of allah Azul, the shin of allah Azul, etc now we need to understand this within the Arabic, the Arabic language. <laughs> Firstly, Allah, Allah has revealed the Quran in Arabic language. Now, do we believe in the? Uh, we have to believe whatever Allah has revealed in the Prophet sallallahu in the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu yeah. Now, some of them they, they went, they said these these words has no meaning. So you just leave it, they call mufawwadah, they just, they have no meaning. And we just leave the meaning to Allah. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they said, no, they interpreted the meaning to something else. Yeah, to say, uh, for example, the hand, that means the power of Allah, the eyes means the Allah's uh, protection, etc. Yeah, so they use the metaphor. Yeah. But we, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, who are following the, 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 in, the th in the first three generation of Islam, the Sahaba and the Tabi'in, the Tabi'i Tabi'in, how they understood these, these terms? They understood it as it is. They didn't change the meaning, they didn't distort the meaning, they kept the meaning as it is without, without going into how. How we don't know. But to clarify, when you say as it is, so for example, when Allah says Yad and Waj, and that means Allah has a real hand. Yeah, but we don't, when, we, when you say as it is, you know, like I said, some people try to anthropomorphize yeah. this by saying that this is like hand and they even use sign like that. No, we, we, we don't we, say, we, we don't, don't say, say that, we do don't we? say this. Yes, even exactly. I will tell you, I will tell you how. For example, now in our, now in our days, in our, in, in our time and age, yeah, we, I have a hand, yeah, and the mouse has a hand. The clock has a hand. The clock has a hand. <laughs> in Arabic language, we saw the door handle, they call it hand. Yeah, but they say hand. It's yeah, the handle. Yeah, hand. the handle. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they say. Handle. Yeah, we say, we, they say, we say, we, then handle, we say hand, uh, door, door hand. So uh, are those hands are similar? No, no, they're not. But they share the same term. Yeah. Yeah? They share the same term. Same. All of them. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All of them, they share the same term. So if we are using the same term for different things and they have different meaning and they have different functions, mm. yeah? yeah? How about how about between us and Allah Azza So Allah Azza has a real hand yeah. that befits His Majesty and Glory. Absolutely. But His hand, Allah stated in the Quran, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ we Nothing imagine. similar to him. Exactly. Nothing. We cannot imagine. We don't say like our hand. We don't say, okay. Uh, uh, and by the way, as well, the Prophet he said, Allah has fingers. Mm. I'll mention as well in the hadith that the heart of the people are between two fingers of Allah. Yeah. Allah twists them the way that He wish. Does it mean we cannot say all? But one, yeah. one second. We need to understand. Yeah. We need to put it into context that you cannot use the metaphor if you don't have the real of it. Yeah, because one you second. don't even know it. So. I, I will. I will tell. You, I will get you to the point. 
Now, in Arabic language, you cannot use metaphor of something if you don't have the reality of it. Let me give you an example. In our, in our life, let's say in English, they say, if you want to say, I'll give you a hand, what, what does it mean? I will give you help. Help, yeah. yeah? I don't know if in English that ha it happens. Generally, in Arabic, it doesn't, it doesn't work. If someone, his two hands are cut, he doesn't have hands. Yeah? And by the way, in Arabic, they use the same term. They say, I will, mean, I will give you a hand, I will help you. Yeah. If his two hands are cut, he, cannot, he doesn't have hands. He will not use the same term, not, even though he's not helping you with his own hands. He's not using, helping you physically. Mm -hmm. He might help you with an idea, he might help you whatever, yeah? But he will not use the same term, I will give you a hand. Mm -hmm. He will use, I will help you, whatever. Okay. Because he doesn't have the real of it to use the metaphor of it. Even though he's using metaphorically, he will say, I will give you a hand, meaning metaphorically. I'm not giving you my hand. I mean, I will give you my help, whatever help that you are requ requ requiring. Yeah. yeah? So they say in Arabic language, if you don't have the real of, of the, uh, the real of the attribute, you cannot use the metaphor of it. As simple as that. But I think what people mean when they say metaphor is how you use it. For example, there's an ayah in the Quran, I forgot the reference, you probably know it, that everything will be destroyed except... Yeah, everything will vanish except his face. So we don't, we don't obviously say that everything including Allah's attributes will be destroyed and only his face will remain. We don't say no, that. So again, that going back to the face, yeah. now again, the, the, the face, again, you know, again in the past as well, for example here nowadays, the, or in English, they use the term, uh, no, the head, <laughs> the head of the tribe, they say this is the tribe head, yeah, he is the tribe head. Head of the tribe. Yeah. Or the head of the tribe, yeah. yeah. So, or head of the country. Head of or the nation. head of the country, yeah. yeah head of the in Arabic, they use face for the tribe. They say, this person is the face of that tribe. Oh, okay. So they don't use head. They use, they sometimes use, but the general term, they say, Wajhul Qabil, meaning he is yeah. the face of that tribe. So not the yeah. Real yeah. Face. Arab? Yeah. yeah. So you know what you're I think so, in, a, in, in advertising, they yeah. use the same thing, like face of a company, you know? Yeah, face of the you company, have, yeah. yeah. So it's not the shape <laughs> of the thing. Yeah, yeah. so, the, so the, the point is, the point is, yeah, the point is, in the Arabs, in the, amongst the Arabs, they will not use a person whose his face burnt oh, and deformed. Yeah. They will not use him, even though he's the most intellectual, the most intelligent person, they will not use him as the face of the tribe, as the head of the tribe. Because he is losing the real of it. The real of it. That's why they used to, it used to take a mic of this person. Yeah. If someone is, if, are you face of the tribe, look at your face. These things, yeah. Due to this, that's, it is something that was known amongst them. So because of this understanding, so that's why when Allah has used the term, even though this term is not about only the face of Allah and everything, every, all his attributes will be, will be vanished. It means Allah himself will, that it represent him. The face of Allah meaning what? It is Allah and what represent Allah or what is for Allah. So meaning, meaning Allah will remain and the righteous deeds will remain. Why we say, why, why the righteous deeds? Because Allah stated in the Quran, uh, uh, and as well, uh, or the Prophet said, you wanted the face of Allah. So whatever, whatever you have done of the righteous deeds for Allah's sake, in Arabic we say, for Allah's face. That's why we use it. Okay. We saw Yabtaghi bihi wa Jalla, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, if you, did, if you did something that you are want, you are demanding the face of Allah Azza Meaning that you are demanding the, the uh, you are demanding the, uh, for example, the reward from Allah Azza what is for the sake, for Allah's sake, etc. Yeah, for Allah's sake. Gratitude to Allah. To so that's why when Allah stated in the Quran, everything will vanish except his face, meaning Allah will remain and whatever and the righteous deeds will remain what was for his sake that's what it means yeah so that's due to this this is the power of arabic yeah that's the power that's the good that's the good thing the language yeah. Allah. yeah so that means also allah English, you know shake and, and uh, yeah. not allah though so if you say only allah will remain oh, I see, okay. that means what about the righteous deeds that you have done yeah you understand this this, this additional bit is in the hadith about the righteous deeds or is that from the context from the from the understanding of the hadith from from the understanding of the verse from the verse and and the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu anything that you have done it, يبتغي به وجه الله that you wanted the face of Allah on it. Yeah. So that means everything that for Allah's sake it will remain. So it will not vanish. Yeah. Also in, in English, you know, we have this term about the face, like to save face. It doesn't mean just to save your face, it yeah. means to save your honor. Your honor. You know, like that way. So it's, it's, it's metaphoric, but again, taking the shape of face yeah. or using the terminology, the terminology of the face. Yeah. So due to this here, 
all of these terms that Allah Azzawajal has the real attribute of it, yeah. but even though it was used in a, in a, in you could say in a, in a metaphor way, yeah. but I, Allah has the real of it. So because this, this is the understanding of the companions, the tabi'in and the tabi'in, tabi'in. Yeah. They they confirmed. They used this term. They said, okay, when when they came to the to the to this word, that this is what it means. It means what Allah's what was for Allah's sake, what was for and Allah Azzawajal Himself, and that's confirmed that Allah has a real face. They use this yeah. when Allah has talked about His hand. And we'll see Allah one day, isn't it? Uh, uh, yeah, and we'll see. And yeah. when the Prophet, when the Prophet, when Allah Azza has said, when Allah Azza, for example, uh, uh, when Allah Azza has said as well, uh, or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He said, oh, uh, Allah, for example, Yadullah fi qaidihim. Allah's hand is above their hand. That Allah support them and 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 protect them. Yeah. And they use this term to say that means Allah has the real hand. Yeah, the way that befits His Majesty, and as well when Allah has said to Iblis, you know, I said to them, uh, these people who deny the attributes of Allah, uh, the hands of Allah. Well, Allah created Adam with, no, his with his two hands. With his two hands, yeah. I said <laughs> Iblis understood it. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> he's Shaitan. <laughs> Iblis understood that Allah has two hands yes. and accepted this. And you, after fourteen hundred years ago, after four hundred years of revelation of the Quran. Yes, you say, oh, we don't know what the meaning of that. Yeah. Iblis understood it. He, he understood that Allah has two hands. There's a whole Quran. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> we, we don't more know. Than that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so the point is, so Allah has said to Iblis, oh, why don't you prostrate to what I have created with my two hands? Mm. And if it's power, the power, you cannot have this, the, the, the term, which is, we we'll call it the plural, but we have in Arabic because the, the, there is a plural, which is more, more than three, and there is as well two for two. So Allah, here, so the power cannot be two or plural. Yeah. The power is power. It doesn't have plural of it. So the same thing when Allah Allah is able to say with that, my power. That reminds me one more thing that they usually come as a shubahat for the Muslims, which is they say that oh why does Allah have two right hands? Again, two right hands the way that Bifit says because we can't even yeah. comprehend Allah Azzawajal. Because you are comparing Allah to you to, to the body of the human being exactly. and he has two he has the right hand side and he doesn't have the left hand side. We don't compare it. But, we don't but, but we but leave in Arabic it. it has a certain meaning, right? It the right has in uh, terms of his magnitude. No, it is his generosity, etc. But as well mm. that the way that Bifit says majesty, we don't know. It shows more power. We, no, we, with two hands, it shows more the magnitude. No no but the, the yeah, thing I understand. Right hand. it doesn't it, it, yeah. no, again right hand does the thing. we don't know. We don't know why Allah, why the what Prophet the, he has used. He said, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, wa kilta yaday rabbi yameen. That could be in terms of barakah. Yeah. But the question is, it could be the meaning of barakah because yameen yeah, or yaman in Arabic means yeah. barakah. Yeah. yeah. And it means generosity, etc. Yeah. And it could be, for example, in the same time that we take it as it is. We keep it as it is. These terms, which is in related to attributes of Allah, we leave, we leave the how in Allah, we don't know, we cannot comprehend Allah. Yes. If Allah, again, we say the difference between the Allah and His creation is uh, uh, the attributes of Allah and the attributes of His creation is exactly the same difference as between Allah and His creation. Mm. So if you say, okay, the face of Allah, you compare it to the face of the creation, you say, are the, are, is Allah similar to His creation? They say, no, Allah stated, denied this. Like the same thing with His attributes. Yeah. So His attributes, of course, definitely, is not similar to the attributes of His creation. So that's why one of the so most important things. Let me clarify one last point with regards to that. Is the left hand considered weak in Arabic? No, it's it's generally the left side. Generally, it's used for something which is other than good, other than the good thing. Go yeah, the, these things. Yeah, generally. Okay, so you do good things with your right hand, basically. Generally. When you eat, you eat with your right hand. Yeah, yeah. When you drink water, yeah, yeah. Drink with the right hand, so on. Uh, so okay, let's move on to another point. So again, that's why we we keep yeah. saying Allah has two hands, the way that befits His Majesty and glory. Yeah. And according to the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, both of the the two hands of Allah are right, with barakah, with the blessing, etc. But we don't know. We yeah. don't know. The we cannot comprehend Allah. We leave but we the don't how. Just oppose it on creation. We don't. We don't yeah. yeah. We don't. For example, because we cannot have, we cannot give the dimensions to Allah. Exactly. Yeah. You understand? We as us, we have dimension. We have left, right, whatever, up and down. We can't give this dimension to Allah. But we know Allah is the Most High. That's all. Yeah. So due to this, we don't say, okay. What about if you say that some people they say if you if you if you say Allah is above His throne that you are restricting Allah in a place and we, we can't we can't say that. Allah said in the Quran that He's above His throne. How the way that we fit His Majesty and glory. Without going into the details, that's it. As simple as that. True. No, sorry, uh, the Arabs yeah. never had this argument. Argu yeah, of course, they understood the language. Because they know, um, understand yeah, the language. Yeah. When it's I think translated. It's, yeah, what the Christians do is because they have this, what do you say? They have a. They don't understand. They, they, uh, they have their God who manifests as a human. Yeah. yeah. So whenever they think about attributes of God, which are mentioned also in the Bible, by the way, the legs and the hands and so on of God, and they try to 
anthropomorphize it means they try to make it like human life yeah, because they make it like a creation a because yeah. yeah they believe that their god became a human so yeah. whenever you talk he talks in that terms and it is but you see Allah talks about the tablets you know the preserved tablets now yeah. today the term tablet can mean the device you know like an android device or something example, like that yeah. but it can also mean in the in the uh, olden days like a okay. tablet you write on okay. yes just just a slate maybe you know yeah. and something like that so even in our own language the the term has changed depending on in order for us to understand better allah uses the term qalam yeah. we don't think the qalam is like the pen that we use we have we know exactly. something we don't know what what the nature is but because a creation allah of allah a creation of allah was made to yeah. write things something to write yeah and this is important because Allah uses this, lang this language in order for us to understand. Yeah. But we do not, especially when it comes to the attributes of Allah, we do not anthropomorphize them. Yeah. Now, let's move on to the, you know, in Akhirah, uh, there's a hadith in Sahih Muslim and also in other hadiths that the Quran will intercede on your behalf, will come in the form of a pale man. What is the reality and what is the understanding and the shah of this particular hadith? The Quran means the recitation of the Quran. Exactly. Yeah. It means your recitation. Yeah. That's why we we have our deeds. It's literally our deeds is yeah. part of Allah's creation. Yeah. So it's, it's so. Do you remember the hadith? Or yeah, the hadith, hadith in the Quran. Uh, there is two, there are many hadith. One hadith yeah. he said that the Quran and Qiyam al-Layl will come to intercede for the person. The Quran will say, Oh Allah, I prevented him from uh, sleeping in the night, and the, the fasting will say, Oh Allah, I prevented him from eating and drinking. In the day, yeah. then Allah will allow them to intercede. There are many hadith about it, and as will the Baqarah and, and Al Imran will come to intercede, and Allah will, will, will make they them will intercede. They will also come in the form of a pale man. Yeah, yeah, not a pale man. Would, not no. for these two. Uh, uh, no, for these two. But the Quran will come in the form of a pale man. No, 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 no. Sorry, the, the recitation of it. The recitation. No, 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 no. The deeds. The deeds in a pale. That's yeah. a deeds, not the Quran. That's yeah. something so that's, else. So that's an important point. It's, yeah. it's not the Quran itself. So the Quran, not the Quran itself, the words of Allah yes. Azza because we know, we believe that the words of Allah is not, is not created. Yeah, we know the words of Allah is his, it is his speech is not created and that's the stance of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah we know this uh, they are not yes. created this is the speech of Allah Azza wa now when we are reciting the Quran this recitation these deeds will come in the form of a human be uh, of, of, of a being a yeah the worship will come in the form of a being in the day of judgment to intercede absolutely yeah and then we'll, we'll, we'll speak on our behalf so Allah the Quran will say not the Quran the, the Quran that I recited in the night which prevented me from sleeping in the night it will come and say to Allah, Oh Allah, I prevented him from sleeping in the night. Yeah. That's what it means. And that's a very important point because obviously the Mus'haf is not the one that's preventing you from yeah. sleeping. Yeah. It is your recitation, the recitation of the Quran. The Quran, and, exactly. And that is what will take the form of the pale man. No, no, not the pale man. Pale man is something else. No, it's in the Hadith, in the Muslim. The, the, the Hadith, Sorry. there is... Uh, Sorry, the, uh, in, uh, in, in the uh, hadith. Ibn Majah, I think. Uh, read the Hadith. Yeah, inshallah. So the, the, pale, the pale man, there is the, the righteous deeds will come in a form. Yeah, that's what I meant. The deeds will come in the form. Of the the deeds, the yeah. deeds, not the Quran. The deeds, that's something else. The Quran has its own intercession. Generally, the deeds will have their own intercession as well. Yeah. But the, the Quran, the Quran and Qiyam al layl will come in a form of two beings. What's this being? We don't know. But those they come. No, they come in a form of a being, and that's, they will intercede. They will say, oh "Allah." Uh, for example, the, the kinship, the kinship. Yeah. For example, the kinship, the rahim. That Allah, will have, Allah has created the creation. Qamat al rahmu faqalat the rahim, the kinship, stated to Allah, stated to Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, you know, هذا مقام العادي منك من القطع. This is is this the position of someone or hanging to Allah in Allah's throne? Say this is what we are, uh, we are we, we, the, that to connect the one who is connecting the kinship, and Allah Azza wa will say to her, I will I will I will connect the one who is connecting you, and I will not connect the one who is disconnecting you. So this kinship, which means the relation between the people, spoke to Allah in the form of a being. Yeah. We don't know how, but that's what there we are very, uh, There are similar hadiths about different like things. Giving yeah. Sadaqa, yeah. Like, uh, there's a lot of things. Yeah. It's like the same thing as reading Quran, Sadaqa, helping the others, all worshipping. So yeah, the I, act I, of worship. Yeah. The point is, again, what, what he is saying, he wanted to say, because in, 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 uh, words, let, me, let me tell you where they yeah. come from. Oh, are you going to stay? Yeah? No, 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 we're just going to go and yeah, sure, in the sure. hotel to Jake finishes his lesson. Sure, then no we'll problem. Eat, yeah, inshallah. All right. Uh, give it okay. the document is that uh, yeah yeah we want to hear inshallah okay assalamu alaikum you're right zakhla khair let's see you later inshallah yeah yeah we're going to eat yeah yeah inshallah
Yeah. That was uh, Brother Hamza, yeah? So let me show you this hadith about the pale man and also another one about a handsome man as well. Yeah, the deeds. So yeah. this is in, in, I think it's in the Musnad. Yeah, Musnad Ahmad. Yeah, number 394. What he says here? So it says here, then the Quran will meet its companions on the day of resurrection when his grave is open for him in yeah. the form of a pale man. It will say to him, do you recognize me? He will say, I do not recognize you. It will say, I am your companion, the Quran, yeah. who kept you thirsty on hot days and kept you awake at night. Every merchant benefits from his business, and today you will benefit from your good deeds. Okay. That's the key point here, good yeah. deeds. And it goes on to say, he will be given dominion in his right hand and yeah. eternity in his left, and there will be placed on his head a crown of dignity and his parents will be clothed yes. with priceless garments, yes. the likes of which yes, have yes. never been seen in this world. Yeah. They will say, why have you, why have we been clothed with this? It will be said, because your son used to recite the Quran. Then uh -huh. it will be said to him, recite and ascend in the degrees of paradise. Of the, yes. And he will continue ascending, until, uh, continue uh, to ascend, the last verse as long as he recites, either at a fast pace or a slow pace. Okay. And this is in, uh, narrated by Ahmed, in Al Musna 394, yeah, yeah. Ibn Majah, Al Sunnah yeah. 3781. Yeah, yeah. Class so the point is going back, yeah, going back. If, if the hadith again, that's uh, uh, because the Arabic term yeah. pale man, that's it, it, doesn't, it doesn't add up to me. But anyway, What's the, the point term, is uh, like as a bright, like a brightness or something like okay. this. Yeah. Um, now, the, the point is of this hadith. Uh, again, uh, go, talking about the deeds, mm. the righteous deeds, the recitation of the Quran, talking about the righteous deeds. Yeah. So, and again, it, you see the indication of the hadith talks about you will be ascended in the last level, in the last verse that you are reciting. Say, this is the righteous deeds. And the Quran will, will come, for, will the Quran that he has recited will say to him, you were reciting me in the day, in the, in the night, and in the day, etc. You are preventing you from sleeping in the night. I prevented you by following my rules in the day, etc. So, all of these things that talks about that him being dedicated his life towards the Quran that's what it means yeah, that's what it means so we need to understand it within the context and again there is another hadith as well the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said that in the day of judgment in, in the day of judgment that the, the Quran and Qiyam al will intercede on behalf of the person the Quran will say to Allah Azza wa oh Allah I prevented him from sleeping in the night and the fasting will say oh Allah I prevented him from eating and drinking and sexual intimacy in the day and then Allah will enable them to intercede. So then they will speak. So that's why we. This is not the actual Quran. Not the actual the Quran that's been recited. Exactly. So it's the deeds. The deeds that the person from the recitation. And the fasting deeds as well. Exactly, and the fasting deeds as well. So that's why it's not just only the Quran as well. The fasting. It's, yes. Here we talk about general thing, the deeds. Yeah. yeah. So due to this, it, it means what it means here. It means that or, or it means the righteous deeds that the person do, not just only the Quran itself. As uh, we, but we need to understand the the, recite, the Quran itself, the the verses of the Quran as was said by Allah. It is the speech of. Allah is not created. Yes, yeah, absolutely. it is not created as simple as we have, we have to take it this stance. This is what Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah Yeah, isn't it? because the speech is an attribute of Allah yeah. Azza That's and that's what. The attribute is eternal, not created. Yeah, and, and the attribute and is eternal, yeah. not created as a speech of Allah Azza But Allah Azza when he has when he has said the Quran, when he has the will to say the Quran, he had he did it. He said he said it at a certain point. Okay. That's why we said the Quran has beginning. The Quran when he when Allah Azza has said it. Yeah. yeah, and and this is another point that they contention that they raise is like why did the speak why did the attribute of God come into creation so speech, means? this is what they say same his mercy same it's his mercy exactly, yeah. same his creation same yeah. his mercy same all of, uh, it's part of God it's part of God yeah but we don't say we don't say Kalam, God comes into Kalam creation Allah. No, yeah. okay. we, say, we say it manifests in this world but that's not we don't say that the, the mushaf itself is we cannot use a manifest again because yeah. that comes to the mind of the, but what we yeah, say that's right, yeah. it can be confusing yeah, yeah it can be confusing yeah. so the best thing we say the same mercy of Allah reach to the people yeah Allah does Allah has mercy here yeah. yeah okay that means does Allah is, is sharing us with his sharing us with, with himself is he exist here no we don't say this Allah will exist above his throne that's what we believe and his mercy reached us his speech reached us this is the action of Allah so the action attribute of Allah which, which reaches us yeah the action which Exactly. And this is uh, quite important because again what they do is they try to 
use this fallacy of false equivalence because yeah. they have the Christians have this concept of God incarnating as a man yes and they call it the word of God yes and they use the same terminology again because we say that the Quran is the word of Allah there's yeah. nothing wrong in that but again we don't say that the Quran the attribute even the speech of Allah which is the attribute of Allah we don't say it is it has its own will will it speaks and we worship this attribute we don't say that yeah. but the Christians on the other hand they worship this attribute sorry they worship the word of God which is Jesus according to them and they uh, Jesus has his own will different to that of the father and they also worship it it has his own will so we cannot use the same uh, what do you say analogy, analogy. the same understanding for the attributes of Allah yes exactly yeah. so that's why we need to distinguish between that between the creation of Allah and Allah's attributes so we need to distinguish when Allah has created Isa alayhi salam, he created Isa alayhi salam. Yeah. So he is a creation of Allah Azza wa and he is not Allah Azza wa Jal. When Allah Azza wa Jal has said, wa kalimatuhu alqaha, that when Allah said, kun fayakun, yeah. Allah said, be and he became. Like Adam. Like Adam alayhi yeah. salam. So he said, be and became, and he became. So the same thing when Allah did Allah command, for example, we say to the Christian, did Allah command that, uh, that to uh, the Adam to be created, so he couldn't, yeah, yeah he did this. He created him so, from dust and he so said be. be uh, so why, Adam, why, 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 why we don't worship Adam? Exactly. Yeah, even though they have this in the same concept. So Allah will command that, you know, the, the, the creation of Adam and command the creation of Isa alayhi salam. That's what it means, that's what it means. There's no conference, it's the, at the beginning they said it's a word. So the word itself is be. It's simple. It's a command of Allah. Yeah. It's a command of Allah. That means it's a command of Allah. That and that's, that's why I'm saying that is where they make the false comparison with the Quran. Because what we mean uh, in the Quran when Allah says, Kun fayakun, this is a command of Allah. To create. Yeah. To create. So by to create command a crea B, to create a creation. It and it becomes, yes. Yeah, to create a creation. Yes. So, but in related to the to the Quran, the Quran is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. Yeah. It is the speech of Allah that He has said it. So this is not a creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. Exactly. So that's something which we need to distinguish between that. Yes. So, yeah, the Quran, when we talk about the Quran, people think sometimes it's the book that we're talking about. The Quran is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah revealed it to, to uh, Jibreel, Jibreel revealed it to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's the Quran. No, that's true, but we... Writing it is not... Uh, no, no, but we, we use this language, uh, it's the word of Allah, there's nothing wrong in that. The Quran... When we say that... Allah has said the Quran yeah, no, 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 with the letter and a sound. Listen, Allah has said the Quran with the letter and a sound. Yeah. So yeah. with a letter and a sound. So Allah has a sound. Allah has said it. Said it. Yeah. And the Prophet ﷺ has heard Allah Azza wa Jal. Musa ﷺ heard the Allah Azza wa Jal. So it is that Allah has sound. So and which yes, the Prophet of Allah has has heard it. But, but Simple maybe, as that. Some minute. people think it's it's the yeah. Quran, the book. Yeah. That is Mus'haf. The book. The book between our hand is the Mus'haf. Where the Quran, the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. The Mus'haf is there. Yes. Whatever. That is the, that's why we cannot make an oath by the Mus'haf. Yes. We are allowed to make an oath by the Quran, but not the Mus'haf. Yeah, you see the difference. We are allowed to make an oath by the Quran because it is at, at, attribute of Allah Azza wa Jal. Yeah, because it's related to Allah Azza wa Jal. But the Mus'haf, it is something that we did it with ourselves and we wrote it. Yeah, and that's why these you are the papers. You can't make an oath other than Allah. You cannot make an oath other than Allah or His attributes. That's true. So you can make it by Allah's, by Allah's mercy, by Allah's speech. And the Quran is a speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. So we are making it. So the Quran is not just only the one which is the book. Yeah. It is literally what was revealed from Allah Azza to Jibreel Azza wa to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the letter and Asa. Absolutely. And also, you know, when we talk in language, we do not compare these. For example, if I have a sound or a speech or my word, I cannot compare it with you. I'm saying, so I cannot say your words are greater than you. Yes. I can say you are greater than your your son or something like that. You know, compare yes. like for like. Yeah. You don't compare your, your sound or your speech. So when the Christians use this language of word of God, yes, uh, coming on earth or word of God comparing to the Quran, yeah. that is against a false comparison because yes. you, you, in, in the case of Jesus, he's actually a person. He yes. has his own will, he has his own, uh, what do you say, attributes, yes. has his own speech. Father has his own speech again, different yeah. to him. And these things are different. So we don't make these false comparisons, which the Christians unfortunately do because for them, God has become a man, he's become uh, a, yeah. a kind of a creation in a, in a way. And then he died by his own creation, but that's another whole, uh, what do you say? Yeah. <laughs> kind of worms there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the last point I want to do, uh, uh, basically bring to the attention here is, they say that uh, about the black stone, obviously, you know, you usually hear them say, oh, why do you guys worship the black stone? 
وي دونت ورشب ذا بلاك ستون البلاك ستون از ا كرييشن اوف الله وي دونت ورشب ذا بلاك ستون وي دو طواف اراوند كعبه Yeah, because because uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam did it, mm -hmm. and because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam confirmed it, and it is an act of worship. So we do it. We don't worship the stones. We worship Allah Azza wa Jalla who commanded us to do it. We direct our worship towards Mecca because Allah has commanded us to do it. Yeah. For example, to ask them, do you worship the East? Ask the Christian, do you worship the East? Do you worship the Sun? Mm -hmm. Say so, no. Why do you, why do you face why you all, all churches face the East? What's the point? Yeah, it could be it could be kind of it was said to them or something. But at the end of the day. Allah Azza wa commanded us to, to worship, uh, to, to direct our worship towards Qibla, towards Mecca, first. Secondly, that the significance in Hajar al-Aswad, the black stone, that is why we know that it is one of the parts of Jannah, one of the, uh, one of the stones in Jannah came, came on earth, and people used to do it since the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam until now. So to clarify, it's a direction of prayer, isn't it? Yeah, it's a direction. The Kaaba, the Kaaba is a direction of prayer. Yeah. Al-Hajar al-Aswad is, is a something that we kiss because the Prophet did it. And how we confirm this? Umar al-Khattab, when he was doing Tawaf, and he saw people wanted to kiss the black stone. And he said, by Allah, I know you are only a stone. You, not, you don't benefit, you don't harm. So he said this. He was saying to the people. Yeah. So he said, I know that you are only a stone. Nothing. There is no benefit. You are, don't bring any benefit or harm to me as in terms of as from your will. Yeah. Absolutely. And if the Messenger of Allah didn't kiss you, I will never even kiss you. Because yeah. we do it because the Prophet did it. So that's why kissing the black stone because the Prophet did it. He was going around in every tawaf. He would go and he will kiss the Hajar and he continue alayhi salatu salam. So that's why we are not worshipping the black stone and we don't direct our worship towards the black stone. And the proof, if, if only the black stone has to be, uh, the kissing, kissing the black stone is an act of worship, that means what about the tawaf of people who cannot reach the black stone? Yeah, absolutely. There is nothing to yeah. do that. They yeah. cannot do it. Yeah. So due to this, the, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was pointing when he was, if he wasn't reaching the black stone, he was pointing when he was doing tawaf on his camel, was pointing towards, the, towards the black stone and then he will continue alayhi yeah. salatu wasalam. So the point is, the black stone has no significance except that the Prophet وسلم, kissed it alayhi salatu wasalam, and he was pointing towards it. That's it, as simple as that. And if the Prophet وسلم, didn't do it, he will not do it. At the end of the day, it's a stone like an other stone. It's not mandatory, is it? It's not mandatory, it's not, not mandatory. something, it's not so a key thing in Islam. And by the way, even when, the, when this Qaramita, some of the, some of the Shias, some of the Qaramita, when they stole the black stone, what happened to the worship of the people? Did Sorry, you say again? The Qaramita, oh, yeah, they, the Qaramita yeah, yeah, they stole, they, were, they, they came, they killed 30,000 people and more in, 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 in Haram. And then they, they took the black stone and they cut it into three pieces and then they, they went to the, uh, the Qaramita. That's a very important point. Listen, the, for, for years, yes. how the Muslims used to worship? I think 20 years or something, isn't it? More than. Yeah. So they used to come, they do the same thing, the tawaf again around Kaaba. And because the black stone wasn't there, they used to point her towards the black stone and continue. Ka Karamat were, if I remember correctly, this were people from what is modern day Bahrain. From, from the Ismailis, which yes. is of, of the of part region. of the Ismailis. They are part of the Ismailis, part yeah. of the Shias. So the people, what, what happened is, in short, basically these people, they stole the black stone, took it to their country, which is modern day Bahrain, and kept it there for at least two or three decades. They cut it into three parts. Yes. They divided it yes, between divided. Bahrain and other places. And, and where were the Muslims facing during that time? Qibla, same. Exactly. And they were doing tawaf, even they used to come. So without the black stone, the Qibla or the the Kaaba was still there, and people, still facing that. So even and, if the Kaaba was and even the people when the people in the, in the in the position of the black sword, the people they don't kiss the position of the black sword. They used to come and point towards the stone and continue, exactly. like the Prophet said, because the Prophet did it to the direction yeah. rather than the stone itself. So and if the Prophet didn't do it, will not do it. Yeah. So just just to uh, basically summarize, so even if the black stone is not there, in fact, even if the Kaaba was destroyed, because it is the hukum, it is a command from Allah to face. Towards the Kaaba so for our unify, prayers. To unify the people around the yeah, world. Yeah, so our, the direction of prayer is towards the Kaaba. Doesn't matter where you're in the world, we will face that way. And don't forget, before the Kaaba, the direction of prayer was towards Jerusalem. Yeah. Yes. Yes? Also. So which, show, which shows us that we are not obsessed or not so, uh, to show that the Muslims are not just obsessed with this place. Yeah. Allah is showing you that. Qibla can be towards the east or the west. It, it was, yes. yeah, it was towards Jerusalem, it was towards yes. Al Quds, and Allah has made the direction towards Kaaba.